we've seen this movie, movie before, and we probably remember, as do you, what happened last time around. A lot of infrastructure loans had gone wrong, which literally stalled the banking system and the economy for several years before it worked itself through. What are the prospects of this time around, though? Sure. I mean, um, we have a positive outlook on the Indian banking system, mainly, you know, as you say, because of the strong economic prospects. If you look at India, uh, we are forecasting a 6.8% uh, increase in terms of their uh, GDP growth. And actually, it, this is the highest among G20 countries. Um, and then uh, it will be supported by, you know, strong private consumption as well as, um, you know, kind of demand, um, you know, strong uh, um, uh, demand. Um, as, and, and then for, you know, the issue about, you said, about construction sector, you know, um, we are expecting actually asset risk of banks to be improving because, um, you know, the banks have been uh, improving the underwriting standards in the last couple of years. Uh, in addition, uh, you know, we see that, you know, the um, uh, the cons um, uh, uh, the, uh, the corporate deleveraging efforts have been uh, ongoing, and therefore, you know, we are actually seeing a positive uh, asset risk for, for banks. Sally, you have a <clears throat> excuse me negative outlook for China's banking system. Is there anything in your analysis and assessment of the sector that points towards broader uh, systemic uh, financial stability? risks or a bank or bank's failure? No, I mean, in terms of uh, China, I mean, the number one goal of the authorities is still to maintain financial stability. Uh, and therefore, you know, uh, we expect that, you know, the authorities would provide supportive measures uh, to banks uh, if necessary. Um, if you look at the property sector exposures, right, you know, a lot of the large banks, um, you know, actually have a very diversified, um, you know, portfolio. Um, and also, you know, if you look at the recent um, uh, kind of uh, lending to property developers, they have been very selective. You know, the white list in terms of, uh, you know, the 6,000 uh, 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 projects that have been into the white list, um, they have only been lending that, you know, about 260 billion RMB, uh, you know, for that. So, you know, um, they, they will only select projects that are um, uh, at good locations um, as well as, um, you know, uh, have strong collaterals. So we're not expecting, you know, banks, to, you know, to, have, to be have, going into a financial crisis. I see. Uh, do you have a clear read in China of the local government uh, financing vehicles and the debt uh, that they hold and how much of a risk is that to uh, the banking system? For the large banks, actually, the uh, exposures to local government financing vehicles is uh, you know, quite small, and they're uh, mainly focusing on larger uh, and well-developed cities. Um, but we're a bit more worried about regional banks, uh, where um, the regional banks have more concentrated exposures uh, to a certain city or you know, in the lower-tier cities as well. Um, and the, the loan portfolio tend to also be quite uh, concentrated. Um, so, you know, for the low, you know, we think that the pressure would be more on the regional banks than on the larger banks.